This is HET 119 Electricity 2 Motor Controls. This week assignments will cover control devices. Week 9. The objectives of this week's lesson is to support the HVAC learner to understand the types of controls used for the HVAC refrigeration industry, discover the operation of the types of controls used to run motors, discover safety controls for compressors and motors, understand the use of thermostats, understand the use of pressure controls, understand the use of humidistats, understand the use of airflow switches, discuss the purpose of integral controls, learn the purpose of binary controls, and learn the purpose of analog controls. This week introduction, controls are used in the HVAC field to operate motors and other types of control devices. Therefore, it is critical for a technician to understand how these controls devices are used and its purpose. Without controls, motors and other control devices will run all the time and to operate these devices someone would need to turn it on and turn it off manually. However, some control devices need to operate at different speeds, volumes, humidity, temperatures, or pressure, and without an automatic control device, it will be impossible to sense the changes in these variables. HVC and refrigeration technicians have an in-depth knowledge of controls and control devices to truly understand the operation and serviceability of HVAC and refrigeration equipment. The terms that a technician need to understand and go over this week and to research is thermostat, pressure control, emitostat, airflow switch, binary control, analog controls, control device, controlled device, integral control, anticipator, time clock, transformer, and solenoid valve. Control voltage is the power source used to control the control devices such as relays, contactors, thermostats, pressure controls, humidistats, and many other controls. For residential use, the control voltage is usually low voltage and it is rated at 24 volts. To achieve low voltage controls, a device called a transformer will be used to step down from line voltage, which is usually around 120, and sometimes 240 or 230, down to 24 volts. The reason why low voltage are used is because in residential use, lower voltage are for safety motives. So less dangerous situations can happen dealing with 24 volts. A transformer is a device that takes the line voltage and decreases it or increase it to a different voltage. For control voltage systems, the transformer is a step-down transformer. The transformer will take the line voltage and reduce it to a 24 volt. How a transformer decreases the voltage is by the relationship of the number of turns and its two coils. A transformer will induce a magnetic field from the primary coil into the secondary coil. The primary coil will have more turns than the secondary coil. Therefore, there is a relationship or a ratio of the voltage to the number of turns to the transformer. So the primary coil is the incoming voltage, which will take the 110 or 120, and it will step it down into the secondary coil. And it's based on, like I said, the relationship between the number of turns in the coils. So a transformer 
is used to change the voltage and it is you see here the formula used to um, determine the voltage based on the number of turns so n is the number of turns v is the voltage and we look at the relationship between the two looking at the um, the current flow through the system. The primary coil is where the voltage applied or the incoming voltage is brought into the transformer. A step down transformer will have more turns of the windings in the primary site and the secondary coil of the transformer. A step up transformer will have more turns in the secondary coil compared to the primary coil. The secondary coil is where the control voltage or the outgoing voltage is the output of the transformer. A step down transformer will have more turns in the windings in the primary coil while the secondary coil of the transformer. The control voltage will be connected to the secondary side of the transformer. How a transformer decreases the voltage is by the relationship of the number of turns in its two coils. A transformer will induce a magnetic field from the primary coil into the secondary coil. The primary coil will have more turns than the secondary coil. Therefore, there is a ratio of the voltage to the number of turns of the transformer. So in this diagram to the right, you will see the primary voltage coming in. You see that there are more turns of that coil on that um, iron core then you look at the secondary side, which is in blue, the wire is less turns, but the wires are higher gauge. So the wire is larger on the secondary side, but it's less turns. So there's many different types of transformers. Almost all electrical appliances use some type of transformer to power up its control. The same goes for HVC equipment. Transformers are used at power plants to increase the voltage to transmit voltage long distances. Uh, before the power can be used for business or homes, the voltage need to be decreased to usable voltage. And then, of course, they would use transformers again to step down the voltage from very high voltage up to 20,000 volts down to usable voltage for a home, which is 240 volts. So. Cell phones, computers, TVs, microwaves also use transformers to decrease the voltage or to increase the voltage to make it usable for the, the devices. HVC refrigeration equipment uses control and power transformers to operate equipment remotely and to control ignition of burners such as for spark ignition systems for oil burners or gas furnaces. A step-down transformer are used to control solenoids, con uh, relay coils, contactor coils, thermostats, and many other devices that require low voltage power to operate it. A basic control circuit will use a transformer to operate a gas valve and a furnace, energize a liquidized solenoid and a refrigeration system, or to start up the compressor contactor from the thermostat. Step-up transformers are not used too often in the HVAC field. However, a step-up transformer will be used in an oil furnace for the igniter uh, to start the ignition process. Also, step-up transformers can be used for a booster transformer to increase the voltage when some commercial buildings may have slightly low voltage available. Transformers are rated by their power capacity. 
the power capacity is the watts or energy consumed by the load. The rate is stated by its VA or KVA. The VA is the voltage multiplied by its amperage. When a transformer has very high capacity, the rating of the transformer will be stated in thousands of VA rating or KVA. Thermostats are control devices. Control devices or switches that are controlled that is um, led and operated by its temperature. Anytime a device need to turn on and turn off by temperature, a thermostat will be used to operate this device. So thermostats can be used for safety operation of, of equipment. So either or, but they will have specific purposes. Listed below are a few types of thermostats you may find in the HVAC field. For refrigeration systems, many thermostats uses a fluid filled type of sensing bulb that uh, will expand by its pressure that build up from the changes in temperature. Temperature sensing bulbs that will uh, vary its uh, internal pressure and will open and close a set of contacts. However, electronic mercury bulb, magnetic and line voltage are other types of thermostats. So. The list goes on and on with different types of thermostats you find out there. But the difference is heating thermostats and cooling thermostats are different because their actions are different. For heating thermostats, the contacts will close on decrease in temperature. For cooling thermostats, the contacts will close on increase in temperature. Types of thermostats, uh, there's many types, but low voltage thermostats are used in residential buildings and can be used in commercial buildings too uh, because of safety hazards that can happen with higher voltages. These types of thermostats will have the 24 volts from the transformer to the load. In a home, the transformer would be found in the furnace or the air handler. There are high voltage thermostats used for like electric heaters and things like that and many times it's found in commercial buildings but they do make high voltage thermostats. Most thermostats used for controlling the temperature in the room has a, de a device inside of the thermostat internally uh, embedded in it which we call a anticipator. Anticipator used in low voltage thermostats will um, they were used in both heating and cooling type of uh, thermostats. The heating anticipator is wired in series with the heating contacts of the thermostat. The purpose of the heating anticipator is to allow the gas furnace burners to cycle off before the room reaches its set point to gain the built up heat or the residual heat that's in the heat exchanger. This will help the thermostat from overshooting the room temperature by cycling off the burners ahead of time and allowing the blower to run after the burners have shut off to remove this residual heat from the heat exchanger. The cooling anticipators are wired in parallel with the cooling uh, contacts of the thermostat. The purpose of the cooling anticipator is to allow the cooling system to cycle on before the room requires cooling to keep the room from running away from the room set point. So by doing this, as the temperature start to increase in the room and just before the room actually need to turn on for cooling, the thermostat will close before that point. And will help maintain a consistent temperature in the room. There's other types of controls that are used to operate 
controlled devices. Controlled devices are anything that consume current, such as light bulbs, electric heaters, blower motors, uh, fan motors, circulating pumps, and things like that. So these controls is based on the need of the device. For example, pressure controls can sense high or low pressure for safety and it can be operator type of controls to turn things on and off when the pressure is correct. Types of controls found in HVAC fill are pressure controls, time delay controls, float controls, level controls, flow controls, time clocks, and hemistats. The purpose of controls are to give control and sequence operation of control devices such as motors, solenoid valves, zone valves, pumps, and other loads. Without automatic controls, controlled devices will operate all the time. It will take human interactions on a regular basis to turn on and turn off these control devices. Controls are sized by the purpose and the electrical requirement. The contacts of the controls must be able to handle the current flow through it. Without sizing the control by its electrical requirement, the control and the equipment can be damaged. The operation of controls is based on the position of its contacts, such as normally open or normally close. And if the control has a coil to energize it. Contactors and relays are controls that have coils. Therefore, the voltage ratings of the coils must be considered. Electronic controls are becoming the standard for controls today because of the reliability of electronics and the fast response it has. Because electronic controls do not have moving components, there are not mechanical actions to wear out. Another reason for the use of electronic controls is the cost of the controls are usually lower cost than the electrical mechanical type controls. So there's many benefits for using electronic controls today. The benefits and the use of controls. So in this picture below, this is an electronic module for a gas furnace. There's no moving parts. And that one module controls all the um, components inside of a furnace. They all lead to this one device. And as long as the thermostat closes, it will send power to this, allow power to go through it, and this will do the rest of the work. So electronic controls are becoming the standard for controls today is because of the reliability of, of the controls. If there is a electrical mechanical control used, there will be equivalent electronic controls for the same purpose. Many commercial buildings are completely automated with electronic controls and the control device to gain automation of the building from remote locations. A HVAC and refrigeration technician can test, operate, and troubleshoot an HVAC system before even arriving to the location. These controls are usually what we call digital controls. Digital meaning that it uh, either open or close. And but it also can these electronic controls can be analog, which can vary its signal. So because electronic controls can do both it becomes uh, easier to maintain, to uh, adjust, and even to operate um, different type of systems such as buildings. Matter of fact, many supermarkets are also automated to gain knowledge of problems before it becomes critical. A technician could read the system pressures, box temperatures, and room temperatures, and even the outdoor temperature from a different city or a different state. Therefore, 
The use of electronic controls has many advantages over electric mechanical type controls. To summarize this week's information, control devices are part of a electrical system to operate when, how, where, and what will be turned on and off and by a variable signal. HVC and refrigeration systems need to control the temperature, pressure, flow, humidity, and level for the comfort of humans. Thereby, it will be necessary to know all possible sequence of operation of a HVAC system. Controls can be binary, which is off and on, analog, which is variable, or integral, which is variable and adjusting automatically. So controls to give the most efficient control to a HVAC system. The most control most control systems uses low voltage operating at 24 volts and uses a transformer to step down the voltage to these different type controls.